Thank you very much, Quick Shot. And as he just said, we are about we to get into the game. So, Bans, before we get into it, what are we expecting? <laughs> Put you guys on the spot. All right. I would like to see a Renekton ban and an Orianna ban. Those two. And then I would love to see an Annie ban as well. Simply to show some respect for Tapper and the way he's engaging. Yeah, this is totally throwing it out there. I think SKT's bans, if they're red side, are going to be Annie, Sona, and Zed. And I think that Shen and Orianna are going to be let through. Going to be wrong. Well, we will see, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, because the first game of the World Final is about to get underway. There are the picks and bans. Let's see how this goes. Wasn't expecting that for a first ban. Vi, Zed, almost well, certain. The ninja's got to go out the window. Gone. There goes Shen. There we go. Expected ban so far for SKT. Both Zed and Annie is gone. Will this yeah. one be the last ban? That's going to be the question. The surprise ban for me here so far from Royal is the fact that they've banned out Vi. Considering Bengi tunneled so hard on Lee Sin in the semifinals against Najin Blacksword, he played it four out of five games, and in one of those games it was picked away from him. So, we talked about this when we were sorting out. Does this mean that Gragas may well be one of those picks? Because Vi is a good counter. Definitely. And now Gragas is open, and he's open for both teams to pick. That means if Oriana is open as well now, if she gets yes. instant lock, there is the possibility of, of the counter with Gragas. That is really surprising to me that Royal was able to get Oriana. I think whether the Renekton or the Oriana got through, they're happy with it. Because I think with the double jungle ban attacking Bengi, actually, who some people think is the strength of SKT, they almost let SKT run out of bans, which is what I thought was going to happen when they're sitting on the red side. Well, we do see Elise was hovered over there. Lucky has pretty much only played Elise, so we'll see what they try and take that away. At the moment, though, Pickley is hanging over that Corky. Corky has been so big throughout this tournament. Oh, definitely. And Koki is right now, with Caitlyn, probably the two strongest AD carries. So that's definitely one of the reasons they want to secure that pick. At the same time, they don't have to pick the Elise already, because Royal... Oh, sorry. Uh, they should actually, in my opinion, pick the Elise, yeah. because Royal is such a huge fan, fan of Elise, and taking that, they will take it away from Loki and take him out of his comfort zone. Here's the interesting thing, though, is before the World Championships, both of these guys made the Jarvan. So with the Vi band and the Lee Sin band, Bengi had a choice of going with an Elise, which he wasn't comfortable with, or I think going with the Jarvan. And the Elise for Royal is right in their wheelhouse. These are all things that they're expected to get. What is really curious to me now for Royal, since we talked about the trinity of top laners being Shen, Renekton, and Jax, do we just see a Jax, or is that too dangerous, knowing that Impact could pull out a cannon or something against it? This is extremely interesting now. Yeah, I definitely think SKT is actually ready for the Jax pick, because they have Singed, and Singed is very good versus Jax, so they will keep maybe this pick now for the top lane, and maybe just pick their mid lane, and now it could be the Gragas, could even be an Ari, uh, and then simply keep the top lane as the last pick, where they can have like a Singed coming in versus a Jax. I really like the fact that Royal was able to lock down Sona. I think that guarantees their initiation, and it combos extremely well with their lane dominance coming from Orianna. This is... This is exactly what Royal wanted that got them here, and I'm really wondering to see what SKT does with these next two picks. Yeah, I feel SKT is playing a little bit with fire right now. They're just really giving all the picks Royal want right now. But they are obviously aware of this, and they have mm -hmm. something in mind for it. If they log in this fresh, they'll have a fresh Korka lane. That is such a strong lane for 2v2. Even 2v1 potentially. They have so much dive. They have so much even, like, peel for, for Korka just with the fresh. Oh, that's the Jax, actually. Very strong top lane, and we talked about yeah. the, the top three to, uh, for the top lane, and now they have the Jacks, so they're going to be happy. And knowing that there was no Caitlyn, Uzi was safe to go vain against Cork. Safe-ish. It's still not the best lane matchup, but they can do a lot of 2v1s. And I need to see now what the top laner for Royal is. We thought maybe Nasus, we thought maybe Rumble. Sin just kind of an outside pick for him, but the top three are down. Whatever he plays here, he's played once or less in the World Championship. So the last pick here, Royal, getting to pick what they lane against either the Thresh Corky or the Jax, depending if they 1v2 or 2v1. And I think it's extremely critical for their team comp here. Oh, definitely. Oh, wow. Oh, That would actually be a very good pick out yeah. if they want to go for the 2v1. He can even hold his lane in 1v1 versus Jax. He's going to get outfarmed and pressured, but he can at least hold the lane. But at the very least, this wouldn't necessarily work for Royal's overall lane pressure. It would work for their quick tower dive. So they're going to be grouping up really early in this one. And right now, Royal has an insane team fight engage. I think it's simply mm -hmm. if they just get slightly ahead. Oh, do we see the Gragas, as we talked about, as the counter pick for Oriana? Yeah, but we thought it was going to be the other way around. We thought Whites was going to play Gragas against Baker's Oriana. And now we see the switch up. I guess here we have the reason for SKT picking red side in game one. Oh man, so yeah, I see Royal's composition obviously being extremely hard initiation focused with the hyper carry and Uzi. Godlike needs to escape the laning phase, whether he 1v1s or 2v1s. 
or 1v2, sorry. And I think White is going to look to dominate with the lane. If he does not beat Faker, I don't think Royal has the ability to group up and push for this game. Well, when I see this combo here from SKT, though, what I really love about it is the fact they can disengage so hard. Jarman has his jump, Jax has his jump, Gragas has his body slam, Corgi has his jump, and they have a lantern as well on Fresh. They have so many disengage abilities. They can simply pick the fight. If they dislike the way they get engaged on, Gragas can throw his bell, shoot people back, and they can disengage. So it's an all-in versus an all-out, basically, is what you're saying. <laughs> Everybody's going to pile in. We know that Royal are all about those fights. So thank you very much, Deficio, for joining us for that. We'll be seeing you in game two shortly. And, of course, we are about to get underway. But first game of the World Finals will be starting very soon. But let's see who you guys at home think is going to take home the Summoner's Cup. According to LolliSports.com, 57% of you think SK Telecom T1 We'll be wow. winning Season 3 World Championships. Yeah, we saw Monty was the only one on the desk there, on mm -hmm. his train. He's got a lot of tickets to punch lone for Lone conductor, else. you know, you go down with whatever the happens, or train. you go through and you're the lone victor. But this is, this is interesting. I think SKT is still the slight favorite, but as we could tell by the crowd earlier, Royal does have the crowd behind them. Something I really liked about this is, if you think back to the Fnatic versus Royal game, when Fnatic got beat, or Royal got beat out by 20-some kills, they didn't have the initiation team. They had nothing to go in on. Now that mm -hmm. they've been put on the backside of what SKT feels they put them on, Royal did get an initiation team Yeah, they team got the time. initiation now. Malphite is an unstoppable force, <laughs> some would say. You could say that. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Summoner's Cup. That is what they're fighting for. Royal Club as the blue team, SK Telecom T1 as the red team, as game one of the season three world final gets underway. You know where we are, we are on the rift. Royal now coming out from the blue. It's SKT on red side first, as they did win the coin toss. It is their choice on that red side. We'll have to see as it goes. Level ones have been ferocious throughout this entire tournament. Let's see if it happens again. These teams just slam into each other, and SKT has more crowd control right now. They could get the death sentence from Thresh, and that could combo with a Counter-Strike stun from Impact's Jax, whereas Royal doesn't really have the same options. If Royal wants to fight, they need to get the jump on SKT, which is highly unlikely. Remember Royal last time went into that jungle against Fnatic. Fnatic were ready and waiting. It was a crazy engage, but nobody died. SKT are in a dangerous position to do the same. SKT is right on top of a ward and they don't know it. So this could be Royal getting a jump on them if SKT walks in. The game of cat and mouse is going to be in the balls. The impact. They're going to know a little bit too early and they both have vision of the danger zone. This always seems to happen in these games. Five people run into each other <laughs> level one. Everybody calm down. They back away to other sides. And yeah, that doesn't tell us much about level one other than the fact that the teams could actually not get their traditional wards down. So as far as scouting for 1v2 lane matchups, they have no knowledge. They do not know where the junglers are starting and they do not know where the top laners and bottom laners are going. So let's check out that mini map. We can see what is developing. We do know that it's going to be a 2v1 in that top lane. Currently, we see Impact mm. heading up there. He's going to be up against Uzi and Tabe from Royal Club, which, of course, means the bottom lane will be Piglet and Mandu up against Godlike. And you already said, Malphite has an advantage, 2v1. It's a slight advantage, and I really need to see now if SKT can deal with the split lane game here, if they can get 3v1 Dove or if Bengi doesn't play this, because early on in the group stage of the World Championships, SKT was getting punished. Impact in particular was sticking around to get Dove 3v1. And if we look at the early jungle pathing of Lucky's Elise, he would be able to get his double buffs and transition directly into a top lane gank, but Bengi's jungle Jarvan is there to potentially counter if that happens. And again, same thing they did against Fnatic. Godlike is holding the jungle with Lucky right now, soaking up the experience, knows he doesn't have to get to that bottom lane in two waves. It worked for him before. Godlike going at it again. Yeah, and we're seeing Impact doing just like they've done with Jax's before, mm -hmm. taking those golems, not even gone into that lane, not even caring about going into that lane. He knows he can't go up against Uzi and Tabe this early on. And you can see the AD carries are very much about keeping the lane in the middle, which means that if the one person, whether it's Godlike or Impact, were to reach into that lane, he wouldn't even be able to get into experience range. Already a lot of poke going down on an Impact. Looks like he's finding every power cord that Tabe is putting out. If you can remember their matchup versus Soaz, they continuously glitter lanced him down. That's Tabe and Uzi's objective in that 2v1 is to crush it down. Well, we see Mandu thinking of creating something, but they realize he's already missing from that bottom lane. Just creating those situations. Knows that Piglet is fine in a 1v1 up against Godlike and trying to help out Faker in that mid. Yeah, and SKT, while they rely on Faker to carry, 
also heavily support and gank his lane. That's the reason the support was roaming up there, because they're not actually thinking of getting much harassed down on a godlike. They're mainly looking to protect and create for Faker. Lucky doing what he does best inside the jungle, trying to be a nuisance on those camps. It looks like we're going to get something headed towards the top lane as Godlike's finding a bit oh. of pressure on that bottom as well. Yeah, the hook on Godlike. He's going to be able to walk away from this one, but we do see that 3v1. It's a 3v2 in the top lane. Pressure on them, but I don't think SKT are going to worry about it. And here's the interesting thing. There's been a babysit up top with Bengi and Impact the entire time, whereas Godlike's been completely by himself. So Bengi is leeching a bit more experience and protecting Impact's health bar better than Godlike is getting protected, but experience and farm-wise, Royal has a very slight edge on top. Yeah, they're gonna have to be very careful for Lucky here. He's soaking up a three-person experience as Bengi is gonna be getting ahead on this two lane, but they may take that tower down before anybody has time to think about it. Impact doing what he can in and out is the harass is just too much from just outside turret range. Yeah, great condemn from Uzi, keeping him on that tower. Look in the mid lane though, look what he's developing. Faker's already just been back to buy. He's kind of bullied out. White's pulling ahead massively. And White's is generally unstoppable in the laning phase on Orianna. That's why it was getting banned away. And interestingly enough, the only games that Faker won in the semifinals were his three Orianna games. It's a huge priority pick for them. And because Bengi is stuck up here in the top lane, babysitting impact, that is a strict 1v1 in the mid lane. And Faker will continue to fall behind if they don't get help. This is exactly what Royal needs to do. SKT, very well known for controlling the gameplay, the style and how it goes. Royal trying to take the driver's seat right away, taking that top lane down so they can rotate around. Godlike trying to stay safe, but they won't give him an inch. Yeah, good death sentence from Mandu, but this is going to be the first turret of the game going down. We can see Impact has already backed away from this one. Royal Club have pushed it the whole time through, and they will take game one turret. And here's the difference between Royal's ability to play this 3v2 laning game versus SKT's ability to 2v1. That turret's completely down, but it may not even get traded directly for the next turret. If we look at Godlike, he's got half a turret and then some strictly holding 1v2, so now that we see Lucky rotating to the bot lane on Elise, this could be a one turret advantage that sticks around for a while for Royal Club. God, like, looks like he will be relieved a bit of his pressure here, but it's going to be the rotation of that ADC lane. It looks like Lucky will be there as well when they activate that, so the chess piece is in motion for something to happen towards that bottom lane. Faker still going at it with Whites. Both have gone for the Dorans. Faker, or Whites rather, going for the early magic resistance. This is where it gets interesting. Faker is absolutely level six, and Bengi's gonna try to combo with the gank. He goes in. Does he manage to knock him up? Yes, he does. Surely the shockwave comes in, but it does not matter. First blow, Faker. Just execution right there, Respite. And Lucky, you were out of position. Getting very close to being caught there. Like you said, Jat, they were just waiting for the right time. Level six hits instantly, and they didn't have time to think about it. Whites didn't expect the gank to be that well-timed. That was incredibly preemptive by Faker and Bengi communicating that Faker would hit level six as the gank arrived. That's why it was able to catch Whites so far out of position. So Bengi stealing away Lucky's farm. Lucky just holding out that lane. Not gonna be too worried to get that middle farm, but that gives Faker right back into it. Gold advantage, they were so even on CS, but the fact that he's just got that first kill is gonna be vital, and SKT, Looking to try and put some pressure in that middle, but it's the Dragon that may well start being the next objective. And what's so huge about that kill in mid lane is it allowed Bengi time to ward the jungle of Lucky, which will directly impact that next Dragon fight if Royal looks to approach, or even if SKT just wants to sneak it because they will have absolute knowledge of everywhere within Royal's jungle. And that ward, or turret rather, going down does give vision, but it's almost like Royal went back and used all that 150 gold to buy their pink wards, to fit those wards in, to now start to control that game as early as possible. So that turret going down bought them more vision. They didn't try to go for items on them. Interesting difference in beats builds between the two AD carries. Uzi went for the boots early. He wants to get that mobility around that bottom lane. Means while we see the Phage going towards that standard 24 star for Piglet. And Vayne play is all about mobility. It's very likely we'll see a Blade of the Rune King next by Uzi, but this mid lane is the focus for SKT. They need to get Faker going on this Gracchus. One more Whoa. time onto White. He does not have that flash up. It looks like he does get a good chalk wave down, but it looks like coming from the backside could be at least the savior on the assist. Godlike very hurt. Tabe getting hit up in the bottom lane. Tabe in all sorts of trouble. You can see him being pulled away, but he comes Lucky. Lucky. Lucky gets in now. Uzi picks up the kill. They're going to try and turn this on towards Piglet, on towards the town. It's Uzi taking the damage. He uses the barrier, flashes away. Still not oh on the kill. Gosh. Lucky gets in there. It's a double kill for Uzi. He gets away from the tower. 
coming in though. It's gonna be Bengi. Bengi is just on the outside of the wing. Lucky's trying to be there to ward him off. Does he have the cocoon? Throw it over the wall. Oh, he goes oh with God. the damage. Absolute cold blood right there by Uzi. Did not flinch when Bengi was coming towards him. And the absolute craziness results in two kills for the biggest carry of all, Uzi. But while that was all happening, let's take stock because Impact on Jax was left alone in the top turret because that teleport from Godlike came in. He is beaten down that turret. And Godlike cannot let Impact get too far ahead of him. For most of the game, Godlike will be able to withstand Impact's split pushing just because he can reduce Jax's attack speed so much. But because the teleport mid lane was wasted by Godlike after White's died, it makes Impact one step closer. We'll see what these guys can put out in the top lane. We saw the early buy from Godlike. We'll see if that hurts him here against Impact on Jax. White's getting his blue buff transferred over. Mid laners are going to be able to fend for themselves a little bit, but that blue buff on White's only makes me think that Bengi and Faker are going to want to take it away. The most interesting thing for me right now is the fact that the two superstars of these teams, Uzi and Faker, have both got two kills. They've both got going here. That's going to settle the nerves for both these teams. We talked about Faker, how nervous he was going into those semifinals. Two kills at the start, that's going to help. And especially on Gragas, which is a champion that he actually lost with so far at the World Finals and has struggled against. Cannot say enough about how that last pick Gragas from the red side may actually be paying off for SKT. Faker does seem to be completely on his game right now. He was down in farm early to whites, but because of the two kills and the even farm now, Faker's going to look to roam and destroy Uzi. Does have his blue buff as well. The big man is also an assassin. It looks like they're going to put four strong towards the bottom lane that Lucky, his spidey sense, is tingling. But I don't know if it's going to be too little too late. Ooh, this is extremely dangerous. Uzi is getting very low, and Faker is ready to go. Explosive cask is ready. We can see him get hooked in. Tommy does get the crescendo off, but immediately he is going to go down. And now Uzi's in trouble. Did he can he get one kill? No, he can't. It's going to be two for SKT. So SKT beat Royal to the punch there. There was no counter gank arriving from Lucky, and now it's completely on Royal's other lanes to push and punish SKT for committing four people, since they right now got two kills for no full turret traded back. Really first class use of transition and the abilities that you know are on cooldown. The teleport was just used kind of haphazardly in mid as Whites went down. They knew that wasn't an issue. They know it's not gonna be an issue, so they get Dragon as well. That roam has completely swung the game in SKT's favor. After losing the first turret, they were able to get it back, plus the dragon, plus even more kills onto Faker. That could not have went better for SKT. Swings the gold, swings the advantage. Impact starting to build up that CS lead. Here comes Ducey in the middle, there's going to be a catch on towards Pink. It's the ball delivery system. Is it going to be enough damage to go down? It surely will be. Ooh. And it's White finally getting his first kill. If you let Royal dive you, they will. Piglet wasn't even in the turret, but they knew he had no flash up. They only had to chase past the Valkyrie. And they also knew since the rest of SKT had just finished the bottom turret, that there was no support coming for Piglet, which allowed Royal the freedom to just dive at will. So we got so much of that split push going on in the bottom lane. The top lane is still duking it out between Godlike and Impact, but we just saw Godlike making himself known. The teleport was down, but he still felt he could make the walk towards mid lane. It counts for Whites. Still down by 2,000 gold right now. Royal is looking to keep the pressure on. Right now, they're waiting for that teleport and the Malphite to come back up on the alt. And right now, Royal's general strategy of pushing all the lanes might be backfiring because they don't have enough pressure. Oh, Tabe in all sorts of trouble. They're trying to get away from this one. He pulls in Pignet. Pignet picks himself up. The easiest kill he'll get of the game. And every lane is getting punished for Royal right now because Godlike cannot push up against Impact and Faker just uh -oh. destroying Whites. There it is again, one after the other. We've seen Gragas is in this competition flash body slam and it only means that you're more comfortable on that champion. You'll do it over and over. Dominant, dominant stuff from SK Telecom in game one. They have put themselves in a commanding lead. That's going to be the turret going down. There's nothing they can do to stop Impact. And Impact now is going to look at turning this on towards God, like Faker pushing, punishing that mid turret. Bengi coming around, safeguard, bottom lane being shoved in. SKT in full control now. Yes, this game is very dangerous to being almost over for Royal because they rely on objective control. 
their semifinal game four win against Fnatic, they were down 16 kills at one point in that game four, but because they had turret control and dragon control, Royal was able to come out on top. But when they lose their lame dominance and they are now down three turrets to one with no dragon, they don't have that much to come back with. Right now, Royal needs to find ways of forcing 5v5 yeah. team fights, but because they don't have something to deal with impact, they can't actually get all five people there without sacrificing even more objectives. It's going to be very big and a very big job for Uzi to come through here. He got those two kills early, but you still can't use a vein right away. The damage won't be there. Got the Bilgewater, looking for the Blade of the Rune King soon, but those Sheens both have just came out, and it already came out around eight minutes onto Piglet. So their spike in damage is huge right now for those team fights. And double Trinity Force almost complete. Things already picked up by Faker pretty early on. Which means he's going to work in towards that next item. White's desperately falling behind while he's keeping up in terms of farm. Those 4 0 1 for Faker is a huge, huge score. And you can see in terms of gold, massive numbers already. And I think we really have to touch on this Oriana versus Gragas matchup because Royal is pretty much the team that likes to rely on counterfix the most. And they were very adamant about saying Gragas beats Oriana. They didn't care if Faker got Oriana because they'd be able to take Gragas. Yep. Yet, with the red side game one strategy of SKT giving Oriana up to Royal. I think it just baited Whites into picking it. So much confidence in himself, not enough respect for Faker's Gragas, and that is really a key moment in this game. We'll see what SKT can do down. Looking to pinch down now on the jungle of Royal as they make their way down mid. You see the rotation up here from Uzi and Tabe as well, but I don't think they are going to get too far. SKT is already trying to cut them off. They're trying to catch out. Tabe, oh, Tabe, oh. flash crescendo. Teleport coming in. They're going to get a Faker. Faker goes down. Oh, no. Disaster, though. The shutdown goal goes to Tabe. And Royal needs to continue this chase. That was their 5v5, but they only got one kill. And what do they have left? That used all their initiation ultimates except for the shockwave from Oriana. And they're going to look to dive because they are hopelessly behind right here. See if they can get it against three. The unfortunate love for damage in the bottom lane is the Ignite. Takes the kill Whoa. for Tabe. The shockwave goes down and they hook in Godlike. They're going in for Mandu as well. They're going to try to take one around. Peggy comes in. Cataclysm getting there. Piglet gets one. Piglet gets two. Can they turn it around? It's going big. Godlike trying to get away from this one. One more hit will do oh. it. And lucky and Mandu duking it out. Looking down the river. Godlike's in trouble, but Piglet's gonna fight Kaloki. There we go. And look what's happening in that top lane. Bam! There's another turret. So that's the risk Royal runs every time they group up is not only the split push from Impact, but the AoE damage from Piglet's completed Trinity Force. Watch how they overcommit for Banky, and Piglet shreds. His Gatling gun, his Phosphorus Bomb, and the big one hits all three people that were diving there for Royal. It means they can't commit the rest of this turret dive. Banky actually put down an ultimate right at the end just to try and trap a bit, and it just meant that Royal's dive went awry. That was one of those everybody following the call, and they were trying to do what they could. You see, eight to five on the scoreboard now, and a 5,000 gold lead. Last time we looked at these turrets just a few minutes ago, it was one to one. SKT has now dropped three more turrets in their favor. All the outer tier is gone, and they've already gotten a second tier turret in that top lane, which Impact doesn't look like he's going to be leaving anytime soon after they re-engage their split. Serious problems here for Royal. They need to win the next team fight, and that could be coming in 20 seconds time. We see that dragon will be up. White is getting that blue buff, and everybody's going to be ready. This could be our first 5v5 engage. But the thing is, when SK Telecom takes mid-game dragons, they don't let you contest it. They overward your jungle, and they dive you when you get close. Very nice. Uzi getting hit him. Oh, he gets blasted away. I don't think there's catch potential on this. Very, very lucky to catch the explosive cast just as he flashed which knocked him away. So he made Faker look worse than he actually was. He performed it perfectly as they fly in towards the Dragon Pit. As we saw, everybody gets to jump out over that wall. That's the way SK Telecom is playing right now. Once Godlike showed himself as Malphite in the top lane without teleport up, it was a dragon for SKT since they'd already taken Uzi out of the fight. And at best, it was a three-man steal attempt by Royal, which would have been suicide. All right, so we're getting our first core items in around the board. That was actually a 14-minute Triforce that Piglet put in his hands. We see Impact with his as well, the Sunfire Cape, the Athenes on both sides. So those first items mean that the fight can possibly go in your favor. But right now, SKT controlling most of the positioning, meaning the fight is heavily on their side. Taking red, taking blue, the map right now is theirs. And we know that Royal's strategies over in the LPL in China was Raise the Puppy because that's Uzi's nickname. Right. 
but because their team is so heavily dive focused and Impact, Banky, and Faker, all from SKT, can get onto Uzi, it's very hard to raise him because there's a lot of people that are trying to kill him right now and there's no real way for Royal to protect him safely. Godlike going aggressive on Mandu here. He does have White coming Ooh. across with him. Forces that flash out from Mandu. Means summon a spell will be down. But once again, Impact. In the top lane, Jax just pushing strong. Yes, and this is Royal's game. They're going to look to dive, which is now predictable by SKT. SK Telecom already repelled the dive with less people, only because Piglet stayed safe. As long as Piglet is positioned well with these double buffs, a dive would be a disaster for Royal. And SKT themselves just pinged the inhibitor turret. They still have the second tier, but they said everybody group. It's a possibility we may lose this or have to fight. Everybody on the same page right now, it seems, for both teams. There is a ping in the bottom lane that says this wave is going to be big. If we can pressure this, we can get something off it. Royal trying to set up a sneaky gank there, but instead a bomb comes out from Piglet, spots them all, catches <laughs> all four of them. And says, yeah, we know what you're going to do. We're not foolish. We're not going to run straight headlong in towards that turret like you did on us. And Royal Gaming now, they're in towards a defensive position. And once SKT gets teams in this position, they are extremely comfortable. The best thing that SKT has done is starve people out once they get leads. They're not going to look to overcommit until they can get a clean fight, or they're going to wait for Royal to commit in the game, engage back at them. SKT is the best in the world at this type of game. And Godlike is really what they're banking on here. Look at how far they are forced to play back on this turret. The Thresh Hooks, the Barrels, Jax can jump in. Impact doesn't care. He'll fight under the turret. Corky Bombs. Royal can't even stop the siege coming in on this turret. Yeah, right now they are trying their best to just keep them away. Finally another wave of minions comes in and SKT get a couple of hits in it. Once again, Godlike getting in their Ooh. faces, trying to keep them away, but there's just simply not the damage to repel them. Those barrels keep on rolling through, and every time Jax gets on that turret, along with Piglet, they knock it They're down just flexing notch. their muscles. Yeah, that was actually a Gragas ultimate just for the harass. We've seen so many Gragases in the World Championships do that. It pushes two people back because Royal was too low, and it means SKT gets their fifth turret of the game. Looking very dangerous, but they do still have the Malphite. They have the Vayne. They can get that to the late game initiation. Whites can play the Protect game on that, but... It's so easy to say, but so hard to do at this point, especially with SKT in the driver's seat. Piglet grabbing up buffs for himself as well. This bottom turret still not going down, and really one turret to the name of Royal still. That's the top one that went down very early. Yeah, big power coming out again. It is going to be the Rabidon's death cap completed by Faker. So he is going to be looking to wreck someone's day the moment he gets back into lane. So much so, he could actually probably take Tabe down with two barrels. I think he'd be just dropping straight away. Mm -hmm. Middle turret again, being defended cleanly. They know where Royal are focusing, but they just can't get to it. It's 5-1 in turrets rip. Yeah, that last turret, for, or the first turret, I should say, for Royal went down at five minutes, 16 minutes ago. Since then, every three minutes, SKT has found an objective after the fight or after a dragon. They're continuously moving off of their engagements. Here's the situation right now in this game, because SKT has stopped Royal's early Whoa! game, and now Royal is forced into trying to catch fights. Every time they miss, they fall farther and farther behind, because Impact is still farming in that lane, and since Godlike neglected so much farm earlier, he can't stop that. So Royal's only option is to try a 4v5, but because SKT has so much disengage, they are dodging it time after time, and they are wearing out Royal's engagements. Yeah, Tabe trying to create that situation, flash for flash, missing out, ultimate burn, which means, again, SK Telecom are gonna know their timer on that, they're gonna turn it around, Impact's been pushing that top lane the whole time, and sure enough, they're gonna go in and steal away that blue buff. Everything that's happening here, it's like the bigger blitz hand being down. It makes the lane safer. You just saw Crescendo, you just saw Teleport. Everything becomes a little safer. The map is even more yours. They can engage on this. They have no vision in the mid laner, but they will know they're rotating soon. SKT just knows they can flex their muscles right now. Oh, coming right back. There's it back. Coming straight back in. Impact was... does go down. It's Uzi that gets the kill, and he will be the killing blow on Impact. That's how you stop a Jax. Yeah, and we can see how lethal this Royal team composition could be if they weren't so far behind, because catches like that would give them the freedom to dive. But now, because there's right. way too many damage threats that have adequate farm on SKT, even with impact down, Baker could tread and Piglet could destroy Royal if they tried to fight 5v4. So the kill is nice, but it doesn't give them anything back that they need. They put quite a bit of eggs in one basket for that kill as well. The unstoppable force being down now, something they somewhat need to stop the siege. 
continuously pressuring back. So we're waiting now for Tombe's crescendo to come up. The flash probably won't be there for the next engage. SKT looks to force this one too strong. Now sitting 6,000 plus gold in the lead. The turrets have slowed down now that they actually met the front door. But I'm sure they'll be able to get past this with Royal being so much on their heels and trying to piece together items that they really haven't hit their second core yet. Yeah, complete map control. That's the blue buff, uh, the red buff, and the blue buff taken mm -hmm. away from the jungle of Royal. They have complete dominance. Just look at the ward control across yes. the map. You can see SKT have full vision of everything the Royal are doing. That's why they're going to get themselves another easy dragon. And you can specifically see how many wards SKT has in the Baron area. We're about 24 minutes into the game now, and since the turret pushing has slowed down for SKT, it means the Baron is the next objective for them. They're going to try and get the Baron or a team fight before the Baron, and then use that advantage to crack the inhibitor wall of Royal. Royal is desperately trying to get back some of that map control right now because they've seen SKT starve teams out of Baron before. If Royal tries to move up and gets caught in a brush, so many times against SKT you see someone say, oh, why did they face check against them? It's because they had to. Yep. SKT forces them into those situations by putting enough pink wards down in the enemy jungle and making you check. Because if you don't check, you're giving the game to SKT. And I'm sure SKT also has the inkling in the back of their head that Royal went for multiple 20-minute Barons, although it's very dangerous. They were able to put themselves in that position. Now SKT has done such. The warding, as you said, Jap, pretty much uncontested now because of that. And here's the most interesting part about this Baron jump in. Everyone came in through the back of the pit. And since Royal's been turtled in their base for so long... They put long, a question mark on it. They never uh -oh. had the time to move in. And here's the face check. Uh-oh, straight into it. Tabi uses the crescendo. It may buy them time. It's not going to buy Lucky anything. Flashes away from this one. They have disengaged so far. Royal are looking to engage. I don't know. Lucky's looking to run on this one. Whoa. Godlike coming in from behind. It didn't get another one, but the shockwave delivery. They go in for the fight. Bengi falls. Impacts in the back, but he takes Whoa. three bullets quick. Lucky follows going down, and it looks like Godlike will pursue, but no. Can't get the shard out. Doesn't take the movement speed. They get a bit of their own disengage on, and Pumandu will say it's over. Hey, they got the Baron buff off two people, but they still lost two people of their own, and now they have to defend 3v3 against the Baron regen. Faker is looking to play. He has got explosive cast coming up in a couple of seconds, which is why you can see him starting trying to create something. Shockwave's a long way off, as is Uzi's ultimate. That's why SKT starting to try and push in. I don't think they can get towards this turret, though. You can see everybody backing away, but it's a three-man defense. It should be enough. It will be quite difficult, though, because the range is clear right now. White has to come up, and it's dangerous. Godlike's in the fray. He gets Whoa. taken out quite quick. One, two, three. The health bar says zero, and they make their way out with another kill. Five, two, and three coming out. Godlike definitely overstayed his welcome there. He did not need to be up that far because Whites was on the way to clear the turret. Let's take a look at the fight beforehand, though. Royal got a clean enough initiation, and you can see the rest of SKT was scattered looking for Lucky, which is why they decided to initiate. That was a temporary 4v3, and they got a clean initiation onto 2, which is why they were able to clean to get those kills. Faker came in late, Piglet was scared of the initiation, and it's why Royal didn't get devastated in that fight against a barren up heavy lead SKT. Oh, they're going to catch on towards Faker. The damage is coming in. Is it going to be enough? No, he flashes away. There's no ignite burning on him. Now Uzi's in trouble. He gets caught up by Faker's Cataclysm. Royal's going to get focused in. He will not get out of this one. Going to drop down. Doesn't even get the chance. Tries to go to the backside. Piglet takes him out and they move up, don't get the turret. It's unbelievable that we're 27 minutes into a Royal game and they have not killed that middle turret. They took three outer turrets in every game before the other team in all of their matches. So Royal definitely not winning the turret game here and it's because their lanes just didn't work out for them knowing that they got Malphite against Jax and Baker just beat Whites in that matchup. You see Godlike get into that position where he doesn't take too much, although it is going on to Boomandu here. He can get some harass out himself. He is getting himself a Spectral Cowl now because he has to take into consideration the magic damage from both Piglet and Impact on Corky and Jax. Yeah, some big problems. And, you know, we saw God like Orisa also earlier thinking he was the big tank. Went up in there, Faker and Piglet just shredded him down. He cannot go up against them right now, even though he is the main stopping force. He wants to get in and interrupt. And actually, looking back at that replay, Piglet was just a centimeter off being caught by the unstoppable force and shockwave. Yeah. That was a tight fight still. The thing is, even if that landed, Royal wouldn't have been able to take any objectives off of it. If we look at the positioning of where the fights are happening, it's always in Royal territory, and it's never a dangerous fight for SK Teleton to engage in. Even with this red buff invade, if they get caught, 
it's a kill. Maybe uh -oh. it's about 1% back in your gold lead, but it's not game-breaking. Whereas if SKT catches Uzi looking in a brush in the wrong way, they may as well get an inhibitor. And I think Piglet has taken the same thing into consideration, knowing the shockwave, that percent damage, and that unstoppable force that are coming straight at him. Bids himself a Guardian Angel, knowing he can be the focus of a fight. Faker now coming into the front line here with Blue. And they gather together, leaving Impact in the bottom lane, and they're not even spreading themselves out thin here, being completely in the driver's seat. Absolutely, an impact now on a mission. He's a machine, he's got that Blade of the Rune King completed. He's just chewing through the minions and straight on towards that tower. The tower will not last long. The boy can't even contest this one. He's not even bothering to let the minions tank at the start of this. He wanted to get the jump on it, and that turret is far too dangerous for Royal to contest. Maybe oh. on the next one, but it's going to be a difficult siege hold against this SPT post. Double Triforce spells bad news for a turret. Looks like they're going to move on to the inhibitor now. This will be one of the first. The Siege has been pretty unstoppable from these guys. Right now they go for damage poke. They want the fight. They're not even really going for the turret. It's always the one, two, the hook. Can they get the cast? Oh, the unstoppable oh. force, and they go into the fight. They go into the fight, and they do come into the crescendo, but they haven't got him down yet. He's going to run away from this one. Will finally get caught out, but it's the death of the, the Royal King. We're getting caught out completely. They're just dropping Ooh. like flies. Just a clean ace right there by Roll. It was a scattered fight right there because SKT got initiated on and they were fine with that. SKT set up a smart siege. Faker was not instantly bursted. So even though he died, he got off all of his spells. And this looks like a clean game one win for SK Telecom T1. Coming in strong. They did have the fights in their favor. They took the gold lead right away. Even after losing a five minute turret, they take down the Nexus turrets at 30 minutes. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Game one of the World Finals is going to SK Telecom T1.